and this is when Phil talked about us eating spaghetti together. And it's the first time, first time I ever put a cover on top of my spaghetti. Dad was adamant about that. Julius, put the damn cover on it. Put something on top of that. I was like. You know, let's talk about you. You now have had the injury. I want to go, go back to to to, go the, ahead. to the part that we missed. That we go ahead. so 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 I hurt myself. I tore my mm -hmm. ACL um, in in I think it was November. Yeah. Uh, or I had my surgery in November. I had my surgery in November, and um, from 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 then until so my rehab was from November to March. Right. So March is key for for anybody that that knows what 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 comes in the what comes in the spring um you know you, you know you you're, you're getting yourself geared up to to okay now the season is over you know march you know february march is when when you're gonna sign that letter of of that letter of intent, intent right where you're gonna go um so from that time you know i i've uh so when i hurt when i hurt my knee probably six you know not me maybe not even six weeks probably about three weeks later um west virginia came calling i mean a bunch of schools notre dame tennessee oh uh, our, we they've been filled the college scholarships have been filled mm -hmm. uh, you know we heard that you you know we heard that you got injured we're sorry to hear that but those scholarships have, have been filled already so um good luck in your journey wow. um probably the best thing that ever could happen to me because mm, um, really yeah absolutely because wow. okay um, I mean, I don't even know if I would have played. You know what I mean? I don't know if I would have yeah. be who I am today. And and I, and I say that because there were some other great players playing at the same time that I was playing. Right. And I may have been overshadowed, but you know, God said, "Nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna slow you down." You know, that's what God does. God slows you down because you think you're getting ahead of where right. you need to be. We're right. gonna slow you down because I I, I need to teach you something. Right. I need I need you to slow down so you can understand, you know, where you are in life. So um, he he put a halt to that. It was, I, in my opinion, the best thing ever happened to me. So, um, so so with that, you know, we we I hurt my knee, um, get the surgery. So March comes around. March in in high school time is track season. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, so so you, you gotta understand, I'm a I'm a competitor, and 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 Phil's my baby brother, and I'm like, <laughs> one thing I'm I don't care how hurt I am, I'm not letting him beat me, like I'm not let I'm I'm like and I'm I am in pain running blood in the water, baby, <laughs> like so 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 and it was it was it, and we gonna go to the one race I, I I can't I can't remember what what team it was, but um. Rancocas Valley, RV, Rancocas Valley. Was it RV? We're, we're at our field. Yes, 200 meters. No, it was actually the 100 meters. Really? I think. I, I don't, mm, so you beat okay. me. You beat me twice. You beat me in the 100 and the 200 that day. Um, and it was Folks, like. I want you to listen to that, okay? Just to let you know, I beat an NFL player. All right, I'm I'm something to mess with here. I'm selling land now. We're talking land, but. Right, right, yeah. He was, he was a deal. So, so I mean, for me, you know, we was running. You know, we were running in different and different. Um, you know, I, I was getting myself back because yeah. there was so much pain when you when you hit the when yes. you put the pressure on it. You know, it was just like okay, I wasn't ready. So then, you know, that time came where I'm like, okay, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna compete. I'm yeah. gonna compete, and, and and you know, it's time to go. And only thing in my mind is, and Phil has been running the entire time, and, and really, <laughs> so he's the man. Like yeah, I'm Scotty Pippen right now. Jordan's out. So, so he's a, he's been running the show and you know winning races and, and, yep. and doing this thing. So it comes time for me to, to step up and go play. Jordan is coming back, and and now you know if you know anything about track, yep. there's lanes, there's lane. You know, yep. there you want to be in the middle of the track. I yes. don't know why, but that's what they said. You, I, I I never really understood it, but I'm like, I know I need to be in the middle. Yeah. So, and we didn't have a we didn't have what do we have like a six lane? Yeah, was it six. Six or eight, yeah. So it, it, so I don't think it was eight. It might have been six. Eight. Okay. 
So let's just say it was eight. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So lane one, you don't want to run in because it's right next to the to the to the to the, the, the yeah the infield. Yeah. Yeah. They got they got like a, a little thing there. Then the second lane. So so how it works is you know it's either us them or them yeah. us. I can't remember how how it was, but yeah. me and Phil would never run together. We would it would always be um, them in the middle right. and then us on one side, us us on the other. So yeah. I think I think we only had like a. A, a six lane track yeah so we had a six lane track so you got to think you know one so us them right. us so that that one right there that that third lane <laughs> is, the, is the is the key lane you want the third yeah. or the fourth lane. we're not gonna be in the fourth because that's gonna be them right. and then the fifth lane is and then we got the sixth lane is right next to the gate so you don't right. want to be, you want to be by the gate you know what i mean right so 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 this is what this is where this is where it, it really like once he once he beat me in this race i said this is never gonna happen again i am so so what happened was he didn't want to get out of my lane even though he was running and winning i should have i should have been like you know what you the man let me get out of it i'm like no so i took his his blocks and threw him like get your ass out of here no this is my lane and then he uh -oh. like no, you get out of my lane yeah the coach came back came down and was like avon you know he he's he's been he's been winning for us, so <laughs> like what? all right all only right. humanity bro i was so i was so mad i was so mad and then you beat me oh wow that was like yeah and then you beat me again and i was like you know what from this day on like mm -hmm. that 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 little thing right there was really like okay i'm getting myself to the point where where i'm i am I'm, I'm never gonna lose to this guy again. Right. Like I don't care how much pain I'm in. I'm yeah. gonna come out. If 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 the meet starts at three, right. I'm getting out of class at 1:30, warming up so my so my knee yeah. doesn't hurt. And I'm and like, I, so, I, so. Yeah, I want to tell people too as well. You know, even though I I looked up to him, and when he left that void of now I'm the leading competitor. You might say, yeah, I was that because he wasn't there. But opportunity comes, and one thing he did highlight on was that. When he left, I filled in that void and I became the top dominant, you know, guy at the school for running and track and things like that. So I wasn't going to let an opportunity open up. And that's going to happen to you all in life, folks. It's going to happen to younger people. It's going to happen at every stage. You got to be ready to step into that door and take advantage of that opportunity. And then when he came back, I didn't yield up the throne. He had to take it from me. And I was committed to letting him know that I was here now and you know, it wasn't about beating him. It was about showing him that I earned a spot and he, he could come back and he, he had to take it away from me. It was true rivalry, true competitiveness, but brotherly in all respects of the matter. So that is something of a mindset that we're sitting here laughing about this years later. But again, he's telling you the story that he left a void and it wasn't like it was up for grabs. I took it and I, I went in there and it was like, even the coach is like, no, he's been winning. You got to move and step in and earn that spot back. Take it from him because he, he would have taken it from you if he could. But that's the lesson there. You have to take advantage of the opportunities that come up. And I wasn't making any excuses. And I made sure when he came back, he knew that he had to go through me to get back to the top. And that's, right. you know, where the story, the story continues on. But it also discontinues because, of course, you go on and you graduate out because he's a year ahead of me. So we, we didn't have our time to, the story could have been a lot different. So, you know, let's 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 move into the, you know, because I don't want the audience to be like, oh, these are just two old folks talking here. To, you know, um, let's get to the exciting part, all right? So you, you leave out of here, you leave me high school guy behind, um, and now you get a scholarship to West Virginia University. If anybody doesn't know, it's obviously in West Virginia, United States for our international listeners. And you, I, I see you on ESPN or Saturday football televised, you know, my, so, and, and now you're this megastar. You have become, you, you, you end up beating the leading running back at the time who left to the league a, earlier, a Missouri way, And you become considered one of the greatest running backs in all of West Virginia history. Um, from there, and I'm just going to orate a little bit because I, I, you know, I know it's like, oh, he's talking about himself, this guy. No, I'm going to tell you how great he was. So he ends up 
what is now in 2018. And congratulations, everybody. I want you to all just give a thumbs up and congratulate him from being inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018 at West Virginia University. He is considered, he, Avon is considered one of the greatest running backs in the history of that college or the university, I'm sorry. So you, you end up now where NFL is every running back, every football player's dream, you know, at one point, every sports person decides to get there. You actually get a taste that door opens for you. So again, again, remember success, adversity, overcome success and more. I know you had injuries in there, but the ultimate door opens up that every football player who has that dream opens up for you. And then you get into the NFL, correct? Absolutely, man. And, um, I get into the NFL, but it was it was through adversity. So wow, I mean, again, and I appreciate I appreciate you, um, you know, you know, giving that lead up because, yeah. again, I was the all time leading rusher in West Virginia history. Yes. I mean, and, and not just that in the Big East. I mean, the West Virginia thing that might get broken. There might be some a running back that come through that is just phenomenal and and can break that record. But not also yet, though. The Big East. Well, yeah, yeah, it's still, it's still around. <laughs> but also the Big East. The Big East yeah. was, you know, when Miami, Virginia Tech, like we didn't, there wasn't a Big East with UConn. Right. And, and I mean, even though UConn has some great backs, um, had a great back that played for them um, and, and Rutgers and all those all those teams. Right. Um, so I'm the all-time new rusher in, in that, you know, that, that, that um, um, conference, right? that conference, which right. is never going to be broken un unless they bring it back. So that's right. never going anywhere. So, so it's that immortalized folks, you're living with yeah, a mortal. That, that thing ain't here. never going nowhere. But yeah. so, so I say that to say, you know, I'm I'm all of those things, but right. then I don't get drafted. I go in um, as as a as a rookie free agent. So, right. and if any of you have ever played college sports, there's a difference between being a scholarship player and a walk on player. So in the NFL, you're either drafted or you're a free agent. And mm -hmm. I was actually a free agent, which was considered a walk on. You right. had to you had to. Again, think about you think about I'm like, man, I'm the man. I should get drafted. And I I went undrafted. And it was it was it was heartbreaking for me because I'm like I, I've done something nobody's ever done. Right. You know what I mean? And, and so with that in my mind, I'm like, you know, dang, like again, like it it just it just keeps it just I mean again, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Hold um, on, could I, let me let me just interject some people don't understand. So to add to your point, because the running back Amos Zerway, who played before you, he was your your senior. You were his junior. He right. was the leading rusher at the time. Right. He left early to go to NFL, and I think he got picked up by Pittsburgh, right? It was yep. Um, so he ended up going to the league, and I don't know if he was drafted or not. Yeah, he was drafted. In third okay, record. so he was drafted. So First then you have Avon come in, break his records, right? And you're now you have records in the whole conference and then you go in and you're undrafted so it's not just he didn't get undrafted but you went to the league no you broke the guy who got drafted his records or broke his record all-time rushing records God, hey! and then you don't get drafted please continue like just just think about <laughs> success and then it hits you again it's like the acl all over again in a way in a way it was um and and, and you know from there that's when you know the mindset kicks in like look right all right this is what it is i don't care you know i wanted to i wanted to go if i was if i was you know if i was gonna go free agent it was really two places i wanted to go i wanted to go to well really one place i wanted to go play under the ladanian thomas and like if i'm not gonna play i want to i want to back up somebody that i know right. that i'm not better than you know what i mean i'm like i know i'm not better than that guy you play Everybody for the san diego chargers like, guys if you yeah. don't know who he was a big, big yeah. running back. Yeah, huge. I mean, big yeah. time uh, uh, Hall of Famer, yes. NFL Hall of Famer. Um, you know, he was a guy that that I was like, if if you know, if I got to play behind somebody, that's who I want to play behind because um, you know, he. I, I know I'm not better than him, and I, and I can I can in my heart concede to that guy. Everybody else, I'm like, I need to be playing like right now. You right. know what I mean? So so right. I didn't get a chance to go there. So the you know opportunity came. Uh, my agent was like, he has a he has a relationship with the guy from from Detroit. You got a good chance of making a team, and I was like, look, show me the money. I'm a free agent. Don't be holding out none of that. Just tell right. him, look, I'm ready to come. You know, sign me up. I'm gonna go do work, and that's really what like once once I knew where I was at, right. I said, I'm just going to work now. Now now I, I know I know what I need to do. I know, I, I mean, I have the skill set. I have the skills to, to really be on anybody's team. 
Yeah. And, and and you know, then the the goal was now okay. Let's just go. Let's just go show people what you do. Right. And so you know, I, I want to just make sure people get to understand his mindset. Highlight it again. You know, the another door open, and it wasn't the best opportunity, the top pick for him that he wanted. But he he wasn't going to let an opportunity pass by. We we keep repeating some of the similar things, and you're. You're looking at a blueprint for success, and I, I don't mean to cut across. I just want to stop because I want people to pay attention to the not just the story, but really who you are and what qualities they need to work on, build, mimic, idolize, or even practice in their daily lives to understand that wherever you are succeeding or, or failing, this is natural to the process of growth. And his story is not even done yet, folks. But I just want you to understand that we still have adversity coming in when success is already obtained. So that means that you have to understand you, you're you going to have adversity still further in the line of success. But let's let's continue back again. So now you're you're up in Detroit now, Detroit Lions. So I, get, I don't know what they're you know, you're walking into a team that is like you're not walking into the 96 Bulls. You're kind of coming in. Oh, they're, they're, they are the Detroit Lions. <laughs> if, if we love anybody, you, Detroit. We love you, Detroit. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, it's it's one of my. I mean, I don't watch. I don't watch it as much because I mean, right. I'm busy. But you know, when I when I do get a chance to watch, you know, I want to check to see how how my lines are doing. Right. Because you, know, you play for them. I mean, when you right. play for somebody, that's you know, it's kind of your team. Yeah, so. always. Yeah, man. So I'm walking into a, a a situation where you know they had they had an incumbent there, and um, you know, so so. It's a story of my story is man is a story of triumph ups and downs and mm-hmm. and I mean and, and first and foremost um you know I, I didn't have God he wasn't the centerpiece but he always showed up when I needed All right um, and, and I really wish I probably if if he was more of a focal point I probably would have done a lot better and right. you know, within those things but he wasn't he was just always around and I mean my story is crazy like so many things but this thing just happened so at the time. It's the last preseason game in Detroit. Like my first, my in 2003 is my my rookie year, mm-hmm. uh, last preseason game, and uh, so the starters had a terrible first half. Wow! And then they said, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna send the starters out, you know, and they're gonna play another two series." Right. So, so which is crazy. I mean, so I'm right now. I'm looking. I'm looking to be a practice squad player, and, mm-hmm. and and in my mind, I'm like, I'm not a practice squad player. I'm not being no practice squad. And it's kind of the story. Like when I when when yep. when you think something, and this is this is a, a jewel. Drop whatever your thing is. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? This is a jewel right here. <laughs> yeah, this is a jewel. I'm gonna cut in here. Dude. You pay whatever you vote. think, whatever you think you are, you are. Oh, well, allow me to retort. <laughs> whatever you think you are, you are. Right. A hundred percent of the time. So the power, what is that called? The law of attraction. Yeah. The law of attraction. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm not a practice squad player. I'm a starter. I'm I play, I make teams. I'm not that guy that's gonna be a special teams guy. Right. Which, you know, again, I, I should have I wish I would have I wish I would have had the special teams mindset because I would have been wealthy because of you know my my size and my right. speed and my skill set. Right. I can do a lot of things. Right. Um I can do a lot of things and i mean i couldn't do a lot of things because of i was i was shorter um i'm shorter so but at the same time so what happened was offense played terrible the first the first half come out they're gonna play two series and then you know i'm playing on every special teams and running back so i am tired and (laughs) so so what happened is um and 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 that's that's a prelude to it but what happens is that they go out for the next series it's like third and two and the safety comes downhill and boom hits the 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 running back on the shoulder breaks his collarbone wow so at this point at this point i'm probably going to be a practice squad player right that happens now they're like boom he's got to make the roster now so if you don't understand making a roster it's it's going from you know 70 80 thousand to 200 300 thousand right when last year more money on spilled liquor. Right. You know, I mean, you see that. You see that. Right. It, you talking to the Rolex wearing. Twenty three years old, making three hundred thousand dollars. That's that's. Living the life, jet flying, son of a gun. That is lovely. And I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. Woo! 
Can I, mean, I just let everybody know a stat financially right now? And according to the 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 I guess as far as the income stats, only 13 percent of the population currently today makes over ninety thousand dollars. So you're talking about someone who's 23 years old has the opportunity to make 300 K. And I'm, I'm sure that's just a starting point. Again, a door opens, opens right now. An opportunity opens the same way it did earlier in the story. So again, yeah, keep on seeing these repetitives now in life and see what's in store for you or what you've been going through and look through the lens of what Mr. Avon's gone through. Go ahead, continue, please. And, and, and you know, going back to that, man, you keep dropping jewels because if I was, if I would have got what I want, if God would have gave, if, if I would have got what I want, let me say that because God didn't, he gave me what I, what, you know, what, what I was supposed to have. Right. If I would have got what I want, I probably would have been out of the league that year because I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have made the team in, in, um, in, um, um, San Diego behind right. Indian Thomas. But, yeah. you know, God was like, no, we're going to move you and put you here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, and then I'm going to open up a door for you. And, and one of the things that, that a guy that I, that I played with, he was, he was a little older than you, he transferred, um, uh, Ricky Hart. And I know you remember him. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ricky, so later, later in life, it was, it was, you know, I'm, 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 I'm out of the league now. I'm in, I'm in another league and it was my time to kind of transition and, and, um, and not transition, but it, it was, it was my time to get paid. And, you know, I, I did some other things and, and you know, we'll, we'll get into that if we do, but, yeah. um, you know, he said, one of the things he said to me and, and it goes to, you know, goes to everything that you're saying. He said, opportunity is not passed up. It's just passed on to the people that are prepared to take advantage of it. Mm. And I would never forget that quote. I was like, wow. cause I called him Ho-Ho. I was like, Ho-Ho, say that again. Right. He said, opportunity <laughs> is not passed up. It's just passed on to the people that are prepared to take advantage of it. And I was like, you know, again, you know, you when when I had got hurt, you were training as hard as you possibly could. Right. And it just was like, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was like whether whether I got hurt or not, you were right. like, it's my time. Like, right. And now it just so happens that, you know, you out of the way and right. I'm gonna show everybody, you know, yep. why it was my time anyway. So so with that said, man, the guy got hurt and it just was the right time and I was I was in great shape. I was I was I was healthy. I knew the offense, right. and they were like, "We got to keep this guy." And, but you and were, but you were also prepared as well. It wasn't like when you got injured. And again, we're two different people. When he got injured, the same thing happened with the same opportunity. When someone else got injured, it was the same place. It's just history repeating itself on a different in a different book. And what you see, both of us were the kind of caliber of athletes or mindset, even as young men that. Like you said, we were prepared for the opportunity if the window opened up. And the other thing was, I, I think we both can attest to, is that we weren't going to make excuses at that time. We now have been given no excuse to fail, but it's now on us. And that's a lot of times I was looking to overcome you, but now I didn't have any excuses and neither do you at this point. But let's continue. Yeah, man. So so I made the team and, um, I, you know, I played on the team that um you know my idol you know the 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 greatest running back of all time right. you know i ran out of the same tunnel he ran out of barry sanders folks and, and so so here here is here's a jewel right. what do you do drop it <laughs> i'll do my own edit so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm editing for you so, so here, here here's <laughs> what cool guys um so once that happened i made it right so, so I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm explain to you what I mean. I made mm -hmm. it. I, I made yeah. it. I made it to the pinnacle. I, I, right. I made the team. I was, I was there. I had no right. goals after that. Wow. I had no goal. My, my only goal was to make it to the NFL and, and make me, you know, make $300,000 to, you know, right. take care of my family. And, and I did that. Wow. So, so, so what that means is in, in, in a lot of, and, and, and I'm, you know, to get into my business, a lot of reasons why people end up in situations is because mm. they're not prepared. They're not prepared once they get there. Right. Again, I was prepared to make the team, right. but I wasn't prepared to be a professional. Wow. Ooh. I was I was prepared to make the team. I, I was I worked. I, my mindset was like, I'm gonna make this team. Right. I, I mean, I, I wasn't gonna be no backup. I wasn't gonna be. I'm gonna be the man. Right. And once I got there, I was like, I made it. And you relax. Are, are, so are you saying, are you saying that often two times, even people who strive to be successful, 
they often fail for achieving that success what comes after that they feel like it's just i and then that's it the book closed story ends fade to black and there's still more after that there's so much more after that and that's exactly what i'm saying wow there was no there was no that was it that was the goal that was that was that was the creme de la creme you know Mm. i made it to the league i mean i've you know i made the money um but again it it it, it's it doesn't end there it doesn't stop there you still got to keep going and and then from there you know go south because you know again i'm i wouldn't say i was addicted to any drugs or anything but i was partying i had a bunch of money um i was in the nfl which you know gives you a bunch of benefits right and i mean it was it was just life from there like you know i was just living and and i mean we were on a terrible team and the leaders on the team didn't want to work so it was like and and again i i at one point i actually tried to tell the leadership because i mean i'm a leader like i I, I know what it takes to win i know what i you know i was three and eight you know the year before my senior year we were three and eight but in my three and eight year i was i ran for 200 yards which was the most yards i've ever ran for in a season but then the next year we go from three and eight to eight and four right we turn it around because of the mindset that the people that were there they didn't want to buy in and the leadership there i'm trying to tell them they're like bro you might get cut tomorrow right. like you know what i might get cut tomorrow right. but you still not gonna be a great leader tomorrow if i'm not here right and and, and again he ain't want to hear that right he ain't wanna hear it but i mean at the end of the day if nobody tells him you know and, and i don't i don't even know if he remembers that conversation because i'm i was such so low on the totem pole right. you know at the end of the day in one ear out the other he's still he's still gonna make you know five million eight you know for his for his contract and i was making 200 so it was just the discrepancy but the words were were the same like bro right. you're not a great leader like you are you should be i, I told I, I said man we should never ever get a playoff when you're in the game never like you right. should you should be so disruptive right. that they look you need to come out like we right. can't but you you're not he doesn't work he was not a hard worker but that's not my story um yeah. So, so, so with that, I mean, again, the leadership, I, I, I got to the point and, and, and that was it. I was at the pinnacle. I reached it. I stopped. Mm-hmm. So we, once you get to where you get to, you always got to have another plan. You always got to have another plan because if you don't, and, 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 and the old adage is, you know, you don't, if, if you don't prepare, what is it? You don't prepare to, um, uh, what is it? People, most people don't plan to fail. They just fail it's to have a plan. plan. And I didn't, I didn't have a plan. Like once I got there, it was like, you know, I, I was scared to do stuff with my money. I was right. scared. I mean, people came with all different ideas. And again, when you're in the opportunity zone, people are going to say, Hey, you know, Detroit was failing as a city. I could have bought five blocks of Detroit for right. like 10 grand. Right. Wow. And, and rented all the places out and, and had to have owned a block. I could have owned a block on both sides. Right. But I was so scared because my mindset was, I, I need to, I need to save my money. I need to save my money, as opposed to, you know, you can't save money. Like, yeah, you got to have some, some, but you got to have your money work for you. Right. And that's what I didn't have, man. And, and again, I, you know, I got off track on that. But no, no, no. I think you're gonna. I wasn't, great I wasn't prepared, man. I wasn't prepared right. once I got there. And once I got there, um, you know, I flunked out. You know, I flunked a party. Um, I enjoyed myself. I mean, I don't regret any of it. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, only regret I, I do have is leaving Detroit and going to Miami. Like my mm. wife, my future, my girlfriend, she's like, why are you leaving? They love you here. I'm like, right. they, not, they just drafted somebody first round, which means that, you know, there's politics in it. If right. I draft you first round, you going to play. And I was like, I just want an opportunity. I'm not going to get it here, which, right. you know, which, which, you know, people get hurt all the time. Right. Which, and, and I wasn't in the mindset that I'm, I'm ever going to get a shot. So. I, I checked out and I said I'm leaving, um, and then and then from there, man, I um, I went to I went to Detroit, I went to Miami, and you know, if if you got a lot of money in Miami and you're young and you know you just not focused, you're not gonna succeed. Oh yeah. <laughs> could I could I ask too as well? Um, and this is something that I want to make the listeners aware of. And and again, I hope this I hope everyone can enjoy the glory parts, can enjoy the humor that we have here, but. I want to, I want everyone to understand that, you know, he's, he's, he's been there. He's, this isn't somebody who's just old living somewhere. This is someone who's been there 
he's he's achieved what a lot of people can never say i mean how many people do you know you can just call right now on your cell phone and say that you know they played in fl they played you know that i'm talking about this someone that like my when i remember one time you were uh my dad was here and then he was like oh let me you call avon for me you know and just talk to him and then i just walk away it's not a higher buy and you guys talk for 30 minutes that's the level of you know where we are as just two people and what i'm hearing is that even when you get to the league there are people who are just as unmotivated as there are people who are common people in the world that doesn't change just because you go to the league there's still a requirement of commitment that agility and the measure of that discipline in order to be successful once you get to that peak of that mountain right i mean is that you 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 can say that maybe looking at your past self and then seeing others around you that are in higher levels of success once you get to that pinnacle the top tier athletes being paid and there are still people who have a mindset that they don't want to work and that's yeah. not that's not isolated to just you at the on the practice squad who got an opportunity that now you can be at the lower level of starting it's even people at the top that have that mindset so you know the, is are, are what we going through at the on the bottom i guess you say or the regular citizens in society are we going through something that is not required for anyone who wants to be successful I mean, I'm just asking our listeners that that's a question for you all to ask yourself when you're watching this. Are, are you any different? Do you have any different demands, regardless of your race, color, wherever you live at in the world? There are people he just told you there are people successful that are millionaires that don't take advantage of that opportunity they've been given. They're, I don't want to say lazy, but unmotivated in their own success. And they are successful to be great. So it, you're you're not alone or, or unique in your ability or your requirements to be successful in life. They're all the same demands. And I hope that wakes people up through what Mr. Avon's saying here and about his experiences of being in the lead, talking to someone who makes millions of dollars and he's making 300,000. It's, it's, it's apples to oranges, you know, it's insane. I, I'm, I'm so glad that you always who you, who I'm glad that you were always who you were, no matter how high you made it, because that's what you would have done even when we were in high school, that's the kind of person he was. When the team wasn't playing it well, you could see him rah rah, get your stuff in line, whatever else, getting people up, and people woke up like, whoa. And now you're talking to a person who's a giant, and then the only thing they're holding over you is that they make five million dollars or more, and they're looking at you as like our pay gap is what delineates from you talking to me. But he still had the same requirement. Um, I'm gonna let you go back on that, but I just want people to really understand that because. You're, you're getting wowed into who he is and his journey, but I want you to understand something that we're talking about the journey of success, the measure of discipline of what it took for him to have all what you see behind him, to be on this show, to be a person I look up to. I mean, I bring people here that I look up to folks. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking to someone who's a hall of famer and is, you know, university, someone who's been to the pros, who's, we have so much more to talk about. And you're hearing the story of adversity over, triumph overcoming it doesn't stop um so you know i just wanted you go to miami yeah but i want to i want to go back because there was a pivotal point in my life mm -hmm. um that that i was in college and i came back to to came back um i don't know after the season i guess mm -hmm. and um i came to your house and your dad <laughs> said something to me um and, and and i i didn't realize it was your dad that said that to me but i i knew i mean it was an uncle he was an uncle to me so right. I'm like an uncle took me outside one day and told me something that um, really changed my life. Like it really like to be like, this is when you talk discipline, you, when you said discipline, it just awakened that. So this is my freshman year um, after, you know, after I, you know, I had a, I was off for a year and I'm go, we're going all the way back to college. Now my freshman year going, you know, we're competing. I'm getting ready to compete for the starting, the starting job in the spring. And you know, I came home before and then it's probably the winter time or something like that. And, you know, and this is when Phil talked about us eating spaghetti together. And the first time, first time I ever put a cover on top of my spaghetti, he was, <laughs> his dad was adamant about that. Julius, put the damn cover on it. Put something on top of that. I was like, again, I was on no fly ass women that Chester was talking about. I mean, so far, I only seen some stuck up, nerdy ass looking women. Now. even know people did that like 
I'm like, what you just wasting stuff. So, but I understood why. He was like, yeah, because it splashes everywhere. I was like, you know what? There is little, you know, spots all over everything. So you know, <laughs> he's a smart dude. But anyway, um, so one of the things that he taught me, man, what what a, the biggest thing that he taught me, it was it was a discipline thing. It was it was a thing that separated me from everybody else that I was competing with. He said, Avon. And he used some graphic stuff too. Um, he said, Avon, you're gonna have opportunities where you can go out and you're gonna party, you're gonna have fun. And I was like, Yeah, I mean, I, I do. And he said, But you can't let that take control of you. Mm. Who's in control? Who's in control? You or the party? Mm. And he said, You'll know when you're in control. When and, and again, every time I went out, I thought about it. I was like, Nah, I'm not in control tonight. <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm not in. I'm not in control. The game got me tonight, but but this, but not when I was training. So so one of the things that he said to me, he's like, you know, you can go out and have fun as much as you want, but when when you can control the situation, meaning you know when when man, I, I don't know if you remember the conversation that he had was a little graphic. He's oh, like, oh yeah, that's how I get it on this show, folks. <laughs> right. So so he said, he said when you when you're having when you're having a, the the best time of your life. And I'm gonna use the, the the vernacular that he used. When 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 you're having the 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 the, the best time of your life, you're out there and you're at the climax of the, the the night. It's one or you know, twelve o'clock or whatever it is, ten o'clock, and it's, the party is popping. Right. Leave. Right. <laughs> Woo! Bass that, drop. If you can do that, there's nothing in the world that can control you because right. you are in control of your situation. So when when. And when and I internalized what he said, man. And and what happened was, you know, I did that and I left and it wasn't nothing. Wow. And then when I left and I came home, they were out partying. I got in my mirror. And this is what separated me because wow. while they were out partying, I came home, you know, right before, you know, right as a party yeah. is 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 climb, it's, it is right. popping. Right. I leave. And I come home, I pull out my playbook. And I go through my plays in the mirror. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm running. I'm running my plays. I'm. I'm okay. You know, white. You know, seven sixty, whatever. So seven sixty. Right. I'm like one to two. Boom, boom. Okay. He, oh no. And I'm going back. Like in my mind, I'm doing this while everybody's partying. Right. So that 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 discipline right there, where where I'm able to separate myself from a situation to take my game. That took my game to the next level because visualization became a part of you know my success and and business you gotta visualize where you're going and and if and if you have a cloudy mind if something else is in control of your mind you're never going to be able to see where you truly want to go because you're always thinking about that thing wow And, and and what his dad taught me was when that time comes and 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 if you can leave you know you are in control of who you are and i I mean, every time I go out now, even when I have a drink, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, am I in control? Right. Should I have another drink? Right. And I mean, and, and if I want to have fun, I'm like, I'm sorry, Mr. Davis, not today. Right. Wow. <laughs> you went on this one, but 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 so so getting to it, and and I did want to, you know, go back there because that really changed my life because it taught me visualization. Excuse me. It taught me. It taught me how. To, to really control my emotions, control my control who I am, right. to not let anything else control me. Because if that happens, then you know I'm I'm no I'm I'm just gonna be just like the rest of them. Right. You know what I mean? And 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 if they got more skill than me, which some of them did, you know that I I gotta find a way to get an edge on them because right. maybe they're faster, maybe they're bigger, you know, maybe they're I don't know. But yeah. whatever it is, I'm like, okay, I'm always compete. I'm compete. I competed everything. Right. Like, I'm always competing against somebody. So, so that was one of the things I wanted to go back to, man, because it's important to if you can control your your situation, if you can control your mind and at, at a peak state, right. you know you're in control of what it is. What, you can control your destiny. You can you can stop anything at that point, and and just go do something else. Mm. You 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 know you know you're you're destined for success. Wow, so. I I think um, so, folks. I I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that <laughs> that is just to be able to know that you you carry that with you for so long. That's freaking awesome, uh, folks. I want to tell everybody to 
make sure you like share subscribe on this video um comment we're putting out heavy hitting content here folks we're talking land ownership we're talking mindset we're talking stories that lessons gems knowledge that you we're laying down track work of pathways of things that you can learn about people who are successful success leaves clues right they say that all the time and you're seeing it right here you're seeing someone talking about the weaving of our journeys together that never stopped it doesn't stop it's here now and i want to just let you all know something is that we're talking about high school i'm 41 i think you're like you're in your early 40s too as well yeah yeah, yeah. and this is <laughs> almost 30 years ago so in 30 years later the resources the people who are in your network they really do reflect who you are in a level of success you know so i want to let everybody know that you know ancestry lands is here not just for real estate we're talking other things that are mindset and we want to expand that into a bigger universe for everyone and we're going to leave clues of success you got to pay attention you got to comment you got to you got to be engaged with this and understand that uh, Mr. Avon, thank you so much for coming on the show and just talking a little bit about your legacy. We're going to have him back, folks. We're not going to give it all to you today. <laughs> no, we're not. And we're going to bring back other topics, add on. We're going to continue this journey, too, as well. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show, and we'd love to have you back. Appreciate you, man. And again, man, we, we got a little long-winded, you know, telling these stories. And um, yep. it, it's been a blessing, man. I, I love getting it off my chest. And again... You know, my wife, she look out for the book for the look out for the book, uh, uh the one he should have wrote. Um, <laughs> my husband should have wrote, right? <laughs> the book my husband should have wrote. Uh but uh, but again, man, it's 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 been a blessing, man. And, and you know, you family, man. Yeah, you know, definitely. You I appreciate me, you that. called me like, hey, bro, don't just tell me time, just tell me <laughs> where, bro. Yeah, like, right. Don't do, that. don't do that again. Like, yeah, I asked uh, listen, folks, the story goes real quick before I go. I know I said ancestral list, but I, I I called him and said, like, "Hey, I want to have you on the podcast." He's he's like, "Yes, that's it." I'm like, "Okay, does that mean yes, you'll do it?" You know, I always need a little bit more. He's like, "Yo, you already just heard me say it. Like, just get me there. That's that's the level, right?" Um, but again, folks, Ancestry Lands is here to stay. Phil Davis was signing out. Goodbye.